Ken Winding with Paddle TV on another paddling adventure. And this time I'm right alongside the Trans Canada Highway. This is a body of water that I've wanted to explore for a long time because I've driven over it so many times. We've got about a mile and a half or so of a narrow winding river that's gonna take us to a lake that we've never seen before. We, we saw it through Google Maps. I'm joined by my longtime buddy, James McBath, we're going kayak fishing. We don't know if, we're, if there's any fishing here, but it's a perfect time for a paddling adventure and it's a perfect time for me to test out in depth the Perception Showdown. Now, this is a kayak that I have taken for a quick little paddle or pedal, but this is my first real test of this boat. And so we're exploring a new body of water and I'm trying out a new boat. Here we go. Paddle Tales is brought to you in part by Aquabound, NRS, Perception Kayaks, and Wiley X. Well, this is gonna be a, a little easier than most trips with James. Most paddling trips with James, I have to get him to stop fishing because that's all he wants to do. He has fish brain. In this case, he can fish as much as he wants. He is a happy camper right now. James and I have a very, very different approach to fishing. I'm happy tossing this little Senko, catch a bass, any size. I'll just catch a fish right now and be happy. Now, James, on the other hand, he likes hucking big lures with the hopes of catching a big fish. I'll give it to him, sometimes he catches a big fish, but the truth is, it gives him an excuse for not catching any fish. Ken and I have different styles of fishing. He insists on fishing and not catching. I, I insist on fishing and catching. Just saying. Well, we're only about half a mile up the river and we've encountered our first obstacle, a beaver dam. Now, I mean, that's not a surprising thing here in Canada. The question is, how many more beaver dams are we gonna have to drag up before we can get to the lake? And the other question is, how am I gonna convince James to drag my kayak up? I think it's pretty easy here. Okay. Why don't you, uh, while you're there, you might as well go first and uh, maybe once you're up there, you could help me drag my kayak up. <laughs> I'm not pulling your kayak. <laughs> I had to use a little bit of a judgment. Uh, I chose poorly. Uh, I decided to do the right approach, which I thought was going to be a nice fluffy little walk through high grass. I ended up going right up to my waist in water. So there's that. Ken took the obvious route which I chose not to, and he ended up dry, whereas I got wet. So how many more beaver dams you figure we have? Oh, that's the small one. I think I saw 30 on Google Earth. <laughs> we should be good. Uh, well, you keep taking the hard way. I'll keep taking the <laughs> easy cool. way. That was, that was really, really was the hard way. I got a soaker. Look, dam number two. No bigger than dam number one. Nope. That's good. Probably the but, same beaver. You know what I learned from dam number one? 
not to follow you. So <laughs> I'm going to take this route. This time I'll follow you. That way you can pull my boat over. <laughs> yeah, I promise. Uh, second Beaver Dam, I did not make the same mistake. I followed Ken, so that worked out to my favor. Although I believe Ken was standing on the shoreline hoping that as I crossed the beaver dam, I would fall head over tea kettle into the water, because that's what friends are for. How'd the camera guy get through first? <laughs> please, please. This is deep. <laughs> <laughs> Ken's like praying that I fall in. It's not gonna happen. Not praying, just really wishing hard. Ken's like disappointed. <laughs> okay, pray. Disappointed. <laughs> well done. Well, well, well done. It's not how well you do, it's how good you look. <laughs> That's why I need to do well. Well, one of the downsides of pedal drives is that when it does get shallow, you notice it real quick and you have to stow the pedal and start paddling. And if you wait too long and you get gummed up, well, it's not so bad, not so bad, but I'm gonna do a little bit of paddling. It's not quite deep enough yet. So we are in Ontario's Highlands, and this is a place that's really well known for having a lot of open space, a lot of wilderness, which means there's a lot of great waterways to explore, rivers, creeks, lakes. We're at the beginning of the fall, and you can tell the colors are just starting to pop. This is definitely my favorite time of year. I just wish it would last longer. Looks like we got the lake right ahead. Maybe there's some fish in the lake that we won't catch. Well, we're through the last bridge and into the lake. And it's a big lake, it looks pretty long. Hopefully we can find some deeper water pretty soon here because it doesn't seem like the fish are in the shallow water. Yeah, all these little lay down weeds. Can't see what's under them though. Wish I had a fish finder, Ken. Yeah, that would be nice. <laughs> you got a fish! I got a fish. What'd you get? I told you the lake had fish in it. <laughs> well, I, just, I just still don't believe it. I haven't seen it yet. What is it? It's a pike, little guy. Oh. A good one? Yeah. 26 or so, not too big, little guy. I use the gauge of bad, okay, good, great. I use the cage of got a fish, not got a fish. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Let me take care of this guy. Come here. On the spoon. As soon as it got a little bit deeper. Makes sense. There we go. He's pretty, not too stressed at all. Whoa. What's that smell in your hands, Ken? Oh, right. You don't have smell in your hands. So where Ken says there's two types of anglers and, and he assumes there are the two types of anglers are one, those who don't mind not catching fish because they're having a beautiful day on the water. And two, those who are so obsessed and with catching a fish, it's gotta be a big fish and it's gotta be, that's the only reason their day is successful. Honestly, I think the two types of anglers are those who kind of get focused. My wife calls it fish brain, and I just try really hard to catch a fish. And it's just a fun part of my experience on the lake. I like breaking a lake down, trying to figure out where this each species is, try to find the right gear for it, the depth for it, uh, speed for it, and all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, so this is all part of my fun. Uh, it's a way busier fun than Ken's fun. Ken is really happy just sitting there uh, enjoying the paddle, 
I use the boat to go out and enjoy fishing. So he's using the boat to go out boating, I'm using the boat to go out fishing. And if he catches a fish, he's happy, that's great. If he doesn't, he's, well, a bad fisherman. I'm trying to chatter bait now. Whoa! Oh. <laughs> Ooh! That's, that's got the big one. Yeah! Don't yeah. lose that one. Hey! Oh! You didn't just lose it. I did. What the heck? You know why? You know, I didn't set the hook. I am lucky enough to get to travel to some pretty awesome places for to paddle. But this place is just another example of how you really don't need to go very far to have an amazing paddling experience. Oh, oh there we go. Hey, fish on. <laughs> well, there you go. I mean, this is only 45 minutes from home. And, woo. I've driven over it countless times and said to myself, I really gotta check that place out. And that's why. Not a big pike, but she's a fish. I got a fish. About time. <laughs> nice. I got a fish, James. Good job, buddy. <laughs> I knew you could. I've seen it once. That is such an important thing that I get a fish on this trip because if I didn't, I would never hear the end of it from James. I am enjoying a beautiful fall day on the water. Stupid and you know what? fish! <laughs> no. Where are you? And that right there is a perfect example of someone who's just happy to be on the water and someone who needs to catch a big fish. I almost feel sorry for him. He's going to be so disappointed by the end of the day, of the day where, as I, will feel fulfilled. Poor guy. You know, I'm starting to get a hang of this whole pedaling thing. <laughs> and it definitely makes sense for, for kayak fishing. Leaves the hands free to fish while you can keep moving around. So I'm developing a real appreciation for the pedal kayak, but I don't think I'm ever gonna leave a paddle at home. I like my paddle, it's like my security blanket. This paddle has a name. This is Tom. Well, a fine day is coming to a quick end. That sun is dropping quick, and with that, the temperatures are about to plummet. We still have about two miles to get back to the truck, not to mention a couple of beaver dams. So we got to uh, put the fishing rods down and make haste. But it has been a wonderful day, even though we, when I say we, I mean James didn't catch the big fish. I did really enjoy spending a day of pedaling. For this boat in particular, the Perception Showdown, I'm doing a full in-depth review of this kayak and you can find that on the channel. I'll leave a link in the description box down below. Otherwise, as always, give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Subscribe to Paddle TV if you haven't already. And we'll see you again soon for another paddling adventure. Homeward bound.